Hello and welcome to another Pandora's Box widget designer tutorial. In this episode, we'll introduce you to the custom script buttons feature. Right click anywhere on your widget designer screen and select Create Button Custom Script. Use the crosshairs cursor to place the button on your screen. Right click on the newly created button and then select Item Properties. The configuration window will now open. First, go to the top right and enter a name for your button. In order to avoid confusion later on, it would make sense to choose a name that actually refers to the function of the button. In this example, we will simply call the button Test Button, due to the fact that we will be trying a few different things with it. At the left hand side, you will notice the Type heading, which allows you to either turn it into a click, a flash, or a toggle button. The differences are that a click button simply triggers a command. A flash button is the same as the traditional lighting desk flash buttons. However, there might be differences depending on the programming or system you're using. A toggle button is a button you can switch on and off. At the bottom of the window, you will find both the on click and on release click script. The latter one referring to when you release the button. Both of these can be used for a toggle button, depending on what you need. Between the text input field and type, you will find a timeout field where you can enter milliseconds. But what exactly does timeout mean? Once you've clicked on your button, you might want to tell the whole widget designer to start a computer or run a particular program. The specified timeout time ensures that you can't click on the button again or do something that might compromise your original command. In a lot of scenarios, timeout time will usually be around 30 seconds up to a minute. You will notice the grey area that says Image. This option allows you to create a graphic interface for your buttons. You could have an image that says Play for example, which would then turn to a pause image or a stop image once you click on it. You could even use a different image for highlighting you're moving a mouse over a button or to indicate that you clicked on the button with your finger in case you're using a touch screen. Next to image, you can select the size of the button with height and width. At the bottom part of the window you'll find the command area, where you can simply select the commands needed for creating a custom script button. It would take a very long time to go through all of them, but just to mention a few, these commands allow you to activate sites, you can activate clears, you can send resets or send commands to the sequence in order to go to a particular queue which frame to go to, pause, play, stop, store active, store active at a time set, shut down, reboot, close, or even a collection of commands. Let me give you an example. We could start our string of commands for our button with wake on LAN, which means you will start a server via the network, followed by widget wait two minutes, which allows the server to boot without any hassle. Then the command start application Pandora's box client, which leads to the software being started on the server, followed by another widget wait one minute with the next command specifying that the timeline is to be set to play in order to start a show straight away. This is just one example of how to build a user-friendly custom script button that would allow a human client to control a show. Your best source of information about all the different commands however is without doubt the help file. Good luck with designing your own custom script buttons in the future and thank you for watching.